morning all and welcome to the shed and uh, building a shed is something that I've been wanting to do for well years frankly and uh, so finally I thought let's just get on with it we've had a reasonably good run of weather a week or so of uh, dry weather so I thought I'd build this so this is a single slope pent style shed which I've built on an existing base, although I'm not now quite so convinced that was a good idea because the base is a little bit rotten and uh, when I put the step ladder into the corner it pushed a hole through. So this base, which I think is uh, four foot by six, originally had a playhouse on it. So this is the playhouse and uh, I mean it's seen better days and it's long since been grown out of and it was just a nuisance because we were using it just generally for storage lawn mower and garden chairs that sort of thing and uh, you just had to stoop to get through that very low door I mean that door's only about three and a half foot high so the new shed will house uh, the lawn mower as did the old playhouse and also this vast collection of fold up garden chairs why we've got so many fold up garden chairs I don't know so I thought if I could hang some of these chairs up on the walls of the shed it'll give me more space uh, down on the floor to cram more stuff in possibly so I know very little about uh, building sheds but I just sort of uh, launched into it without much thought I pretty much picked a random height for the front and a random height for the rear I've no idea what the angle uh, slope of the roof is it's just whatever it turned out to be and that's why some of the angled cuts are a bit suspect because uh, I cut this angle on this upright just by eye uh, or at least what I thought it should be and of course it's completely wrong uh, slightly different on this one this one's a perfect fit because I was able to this one I did afterwards after I built this frame and I was able to just stand this pole up and draw a pencil line and cut along that now if I did this sort of thing again, and I say if because this has been three days of the hardest work I've ever done, uh, I'd make sure I did it with a mitre saw because these mitre joints are very difficult to do with a, a jigsaw. And in fact a jigsaw is useless for cutting uh, these timbers. You can see that uh, on the jigsaw the blade wanders, this would have been the bottom of the cut, it wanders as you make the cut. So on the outside that probably looks fine. That's a reasonably straight cut because this is where the top of the jigsaw blade was but on the inside the blade bends over as it makes the cut and so it goes in straight comes out all bent over at an angle and one thing I am quite pleased about is the cladding I had to order all this cladding from a timber merchant and you can't just go and buy it in bits because you get the best deal if you buy the whole lot in one go so I did the uh, classic maths of calculating the area of the back, the area of the two sides and the area of the front and then just said yeah I want 100 meters please and uh, I seem to have done reasonably well because uh, here I've just got a, a few uh, of the off cuts and then down here are I don't know eight or nine or ten uh, 1.8 meter cladding boards which are going to make the door vertical boards. I think I need uh, eight vertical boards to make the door. And then there are the things that I just couldn't quite fathom. What do you do here for example where you go from the slope of the side frame to the flat of the front frame? Inevitably that leaves you with a gap under there. Well that's not too bad. I guess I can fill that. But then at the back of the shed you get the opposite problem. You've got the downward slope of the side frame, but then it goes to a level slope on the top of the rear frame. And that would have been a major problem because the roof wouldn't have sat flat. It doesn't look like it's sitting flat there anyway, but it's a little bit better on this side. So what I had to do was actually use, I think it was the jigsaw at an angle, to try and carve away the back of this timber. I'll show it from the outside. So if I lift the roof, which isn't actually fixed yet, so I carved it away and then I had to get a plane and actually plane an angle onto that cross member 
and planing that length of wood is a lot of hard work. Now the other thing which I just didn't have a clue about is how much of a gap should you leave between these uh, cladding boards. I left quite a large gap, probably about a quarter of an inch, which may be a bit too much. You have to leave some gap because as you can see from uh, this timber, there's a very small gap there because this board has a bit of a bow in it. So the gap closes right up there, but that means that the gap at the top is very large and you can very easily see not only daylight, but actually grass and stuff outside. So I think I might have slightly overdone the gap, but if I uh, slop loads of paint on that, it, uh, it might fill it a bit. And then where I attached the cladding boards, I actually screwed it uh, at both ends with these screws. And then in the middle, I've used brad nails um, with a sort of low cost nail gun. Um, but I don't know what this says about me, but I'm almost considering, I'm going to brad nail this anyway, and I'm almost considering then taking these screws back out because there are a lot of them and uh, they don't need to be there, I don't think, once the panels have been nailed on. So this is the uh, brad nailer, one of my beloved Ryobi power tools. So what I'll do, make sure I hit the uh, side frame upright, not the front frame upright of course, is just... Uh... Oh, something fell off the roof, just something holding it on temporarily. So just um, put brad nails in. And then the question is whether or not some of these screws could actually come out. So I'm using these 32 millimeter uh, brad nails and although they're very thin, they're only about a millimeter thick, they're quite long. And you can see that they uh, will penetrate the cladding and go some considerable distance into the timber. So I think they all fly landed on my head. I think they'll hold uh, reasonably well. And I've got plenty of uh, brad nails. I bought a 5,000 pack of brad nails, so no shortage of them. So this is a mechanical nail gun. It's not air powered or anything fancy like that, but it does seem to have the clout, especially with a decent lithium battery, to push the 32 mil brad nail uh, fully in. And this is um, one of Ryobi's older blue and orange or blue and yellow power tool range. And um, you could pick these tools up pretty cheap when Ryobi switched over from the blue and orange to the lime green color scheme. And so that was when I bought quite a few of these uh, older tools because you could get them really cheap. And one of the things I like about the Ryobi power tools is that they've never changed the format of the battery. So even from the old nickel cadmium through to the new lithiums, the format has remained the same so that you can use the more, uh, the newer, higher power batteries on the older tools and it gives them a bit more welly. I mean, take this um, Recips or, for example, this. Actually, I bought on eBay for £15, can you believe? brand new and that included postage it was the bargain of the century again this is an older style tool that Ryobi were doing this grey and black design and then they've turned all these into lime green as well not quite sure what the lime green thing is they're certainly very noticeable um, yes I mean this was ultra cheap and with a, de a decent lithium battery in it this thing's an absolute animal in fact, in the end, I gave up trying to cut these timbers using the jigsaw. It just wasn't working. And I actually ended up using that recip saw. It just gave a straighter cut. Now, this roof is made of two separate boards. Yeah, I think you can see it there because they were the two halves of the roof on the playhouse. So the playhouse was a, a two slope roof. A gable roof, is it? And uh, the roofing boards were still in reasonable good condition so I've repurposed them and uh, attached them with the battens and laid them flat on this roof. So there's a little bit of uh, finishing off to do here. The roof needs to be felted of course to protect it from uh, the rain. I need to build a door and uh, put the hinges on and a handle and uh, then once I've finished this shed I can uh, get back to focusing on the electronics. 
Actually, I think I might put uh, a nice little solar light on this shed. That'd be a nice final embellishment. <laughs>